Hello and welcome to Heather and Hops. Hello and welcome to Heather and Hops. Hello and welcome to Heather and Hops. My name is Kat or Catherine and I'm an editor based in Hertfordshire in United Kingdom. This is my little space on the internet where I've documented my knitting journey from project one through to now where we have cultivated a kind of knitting community of makers and creatives that tend to veer more towards the mindful side of things. Um, so if you're new, welcome. It's really lovely to welcome you into this space. Thank you for you know, taking some time to try a new channel. Uh, if you've been here before, it's really lovely to welcome you back. As kind of always, I am really still very humbled by this community and the support and, you know, care that I, I feel like I receive and hopefully get to offer out in return. Um, so just just one little note i've this is now the third time that i've sat down to record once in the garden it was very peaceful and the builders started if you're new here i have been at home for nearly three and a half years um so an illness and basically ever since that the, there's been a building site opposite so I've not had very much peace for a long time and I got very excited that some of the scaffolding had come down and there was next to no noise. I started recording and of course there was noise. Builders started to put the radio on, started to shout at each other, the crane started moving, the saws started going. I say saws, I don't know, it's some sort of noisy electrical tool. So I came inside and I don't know what happened, but most of the footage got deleted. Um, um, and then that that recording was interrupted very sweetly by Alex, who I really wanted to have a nice chat with, but sadly, we've got some more crappy news. So we don't currently have apparently a working cut. Lots of things all gone wrong. But anyway, all that to say, it's been one of those mornings where I thought it was all going to be a really nice, relaxing day and things have gone a bit wrong. I have a very comforting cup of Spring Darjeeling, which is a tea that I used to get very excited for year on out. And then for a few years, I kind of didn't taste quite as special for some reason, but this year it's particularly nice. So I thought I'd have a nice, enjoyable, soothing cup of tea and we'll start to slow things down a bit. Today I wanted to talk about shawls, which is a bit different for me. I haven't knitted hundreds of shawls since I started knitting. I've been knitting for almost three years now, and I think I'm averaging about three a year, so one every four months. And I just thought it would be interesting to, to for me to reflect, but also to maybe share with newer knitters or experienced knitters that maybe haven't delved into shawl knitting. My experience is what I've enjoyed wearing, maybe what I haven't, what's held up, what I enjoyed knitting, clarity, like things like that if I can. I'm just going to bring this closer. And then in the same breath also have knitters, if you're a more experienced knitter yourself and you've got a, you know, a history with shawls, perhaps you can dive into the comments and share your journey. I know that from personal experience, I did a video talking about the, my needle choices and preferences so far and what I've experienced. And that created a lot of conversation, not just between myself and you, but you and other viewers, which I just think is really quite amazing. And if we can learn from each other in this way, I just think it's great. So yeah, hopefully this, whilst it's a slightly different, format. I really enjoy doing them, doing this sort of style on jumpers and garments that I've knitted and I hope to do a round, a year three roundup very soon, but obviously not until the end of September. So I might get one or two more, probably one more garment in, in there potentially. I'm not rushing anything at the moment. Like I said, I've kind of found my joy. I found my flow of what I enjoy knitting and even colours. So Let's start with the first one. The first shawl I ever knitted, I don't have with me. And this isn't one that I've given away. This is one that I've worn 
really quite a lot and the reason I don't have it is actually because I left it at a friend's house. We, a few months back, had a, you know, a gathering of four of us in the garden and I, I know that it gets quite cold in the evenings so when we, you know, if we're planning to go away or if we're going to see a friend, I will often maybe over prepare but, you know, two months ago was June. Um, and it should be warm in the evening, but I still took a shawl and I even took an empty hot water bottle so that I could fill it up. The worst case. But all that to say, that shawl is actually at my friend's house still and I should really make the effort uh, to go and collect that because I miss it. I miss it. So that shawl was uh, the Grain Shawl by Tin Can Knits and it's a free pattern uh, available to all that's very clearly written and is very easy to knit. So if you, maybe you're here and you're not a knitter and you've just stumbled, you know, on a big YouTube tangent that, that happens quite often to us. Um, when Alex is in control of YouTube anyway, um, we go from uh, searching ancient harps all the way through, um, <laughs> uh, what did we end up on? Uh, on like a, a yodeling country musician who's amazing called Nick Shoulders if you're interested in something off kilter. That was a really good YouTube tangent. Anyway, the yarn that I used to knit the shawl was very special to me because uh, I used Blacker Tour which was one of Blacker Yarn's birthday yarn. So I think every year they release a kind of limited edition birthday yarn. But that was used to knit my very first ever jumper, which in hindsight is quite bold to use a really beautiful yarn and do colour work in your first ever jumper. But I'm all for this. If you're going to love working with the yarn, you really love the pattern, you're going to put the effort in to make something you love. And I did. And I had a bit left, so I thought I want to put this into something. And I was fairly new at knitting and I still didn't really know what I could do and what I couldn't. But the grain shawl, it was quite clear that you could add as many rows of a colour as you wanted. You could knit every row in a different colour if you really enjoyed weaving in ends or wanted it to have sort of a fringe. And then I used some Kate Davies yarn. Kate Davies is one of the knitters that really drew me into the knitting world. I, very different journey to her from memory now this was a while ago and I didn't I really want to read her book but from my understanding she suffered with a stroke and had to relearn to use the whole left side of her body which is quite a challenge and imagine going from being a knitter to so no I didn't have a stroke and no I didn't have to relearn my body but I had to relearn how I lived because I wasn't able to do the things that I loved use my body. I was out all the time, I was uh, teaching yoga and personal training, among other things, and being unable to do anything, I had to figure out a new way to use my body. So through kind of serendipity, I learned to knit, and that's thanks to Kate Davies. So the shawl to me is very special, and I'm thinking. I might actually go and collect this shawl and gift it and it will be gifted to someone who will not expect it, um, who won't be watching here, uh, but the first time they saw it were really taken back by it so I believe that it kind of, it should go to her and I'm going to treat myself to using some very very beautiful yarn that was hand spun for me and knit myself a new shawl that will be a, a, a little bit larger than this maybe and just as special. So it will be really nice to give something that means so much to me away. So that shawl's held up really well. It, you know, like I've said, it's beautiful. To, it will be a beautiful gift. Um, even, even in nearly three years of wear, it's held up really great. And I wish I had it to do some close-ups and if I get it back this week, I will try and pop it some footage in before um, but yeah, all that to say, very simple pattern if you are looking to learn to knit. Um, I really do recommend that as a good place to start. You can finish it whenever you're ready. You can make it as big as you want. 
Um, and if you're an experienced knitter that is after a garter project, this is a really good one to go for. Um, and whilst I was saying, if you are a newer knitter and you're not sure what garter means, so you really have two basic stitches in knitting, a knit stitch and a purl stitch. If you are knitting garter, if you're knitting flat, so you're working back and forth across stitches, you'll do all, all the stitches you do will be knit, so there's no thinking involved. If you were to do the same in the round, you'd have to knit one entire round and then purl one entire round. So it's, it's a really great starting project, all that to say, lots of practice in the knit stitch. Um, the second one I want to talk about is, I believe, the second one I knitted, and again, this was I was very new when I started to knit this one, and it, I've got to say, it doesn't look like very much here, and that's because it, it wasn't. This is the Fitu Bleu by Orlane Souchet, Orlan Souk, I'm not quite sure on the pronunciation. And this yarn is beautiful. This was one of the fancy hand, well, I think it was my first fancy foray into indie hand dyed yarn. And this is Spectrum Fibers Amethyst on both the, or oh, I think it was her high twist BFL base and her mohair. So it's really sumptuous, it is beautiful. Because of the high twist, you do get quite a decent stitch definition, and because of the mohair, you get a beautiful halo. Um, it's a beautiful tonal. Again, this has lasted very well, but as you'll be able to tell, it's more of a shawlette. Um, I actually do think it's quite practical because it's mohair and it's so small. You can really get it, like tuck it into coats and what I've tended to do is this is a hair clip I purchased, I can't remember where I got it from, it, you know it's not fancy um, but I would really like a wooden shawl pin eventually but yes uh, this is quite good for me um, but this was only due to new knitting in patience and really not knowing um, the practicalities of knitting a shawl. This, I might not knit a shawl this small ever again, or I might. And before I finish talking about the pattern, how I solved this, and I'm not gonna put this over my braids because they're already wild enough. What I did was I cast on a set, I can't remember how many stitches this was, and I made myself a little cowl to put underneath the shawl. So in the winter, and it, when it's really, really cold, I have this amazingly warm, thin layer that I can either use on its own or with this and have the most cosiest warm neck. And I'm almost tempted to come up with a kind of pattern set myself of something like this. I would do the shawl maybe slightly bigger, but I just think this is a really practical for me in that they're both quite lightweight, you can put this in your bag and it doesn't take up, you know, it doesn't take up very much space, unlike some of the other shawls which you'll get to see. Um, like that's really quite, you know, and it didn't use up too much yarn either. So yeah, this is how I negated a very early on mistake or lack of patience when it came to knitting. But this, the pattern itself is a gorgeous pattern. It's very simple, very um, straightforward and quite easily, to easy, easily adjusted. So it has some gorgeous textures to it that are very simple. If you're a, an experienced knitter, this will be a doddle to you. For someone who was as new as I was, it was a little bit more challenging and that is to do with the fact that, I don't know that you'll be able to tell, but when I started knitting, all of my pearl stitches were twisted, which is fine. You can negate that. I learnt to untwist things and all kinds of fun. 
but yeah if you are looking for a really nice simple shawl pattern that is clearly written this pattern is free um you could probably get away with knitting at this at many different gauges um i think it's suggested sport weight but i i used fingering and four ply which actually in hindsight is probably very good um but yeah great a great another great starting out shawl if you're sort of starting to delve into shawls but remembering that if you do want something that is a real shawl that's going to snuggle like hug, cover all of your shoulders do it a lot bigger than the than the size that i've done it, it's cute it's nice but it definitely should really be a bit bigger unless you you are more after but you can just about tie it <laughs> um but it's much more comfortable with the shawl pin on it and yeah fun fun it's really quite nice to reflect on these so thank you so much if you are here um i'm gonna fold this I'm gonna try and be good i have a shawl draw now let's this is another one of my Hmm. This one I definitely did very wrong and I've been trying to palm this off on someone for quite some time. Uh, it... We'll ignore, we'll talk about, the pattern is a Melted Mirage I believe by Stephen West and what I talk about is nothing to do with the, with the pattern because I went totally off piste with this by about a thousand miles so sp the pattern itself is very clearly written Stephen is brilliant he writes very clear patterns very beautiful patterns and um knitted how it should be the shawl would have been more beautiful and etc however i don't like how this has lasted at all um it just looks like a towel to me like i kept catching I've, I've caught it way too many times and it just looks a little bit rackety and i think my my two cents if you don't like mohair then ignore me for 100 percent but if you do like mohair, I would be inclined to use a mohair base. And I would also not use singles. I don't know why I use singles anyway. Um, they just don't hold up for me and my toddler behaviour. Um, obviously they look beautiful and you're getting... But, to... yeah. If that's, if, if, like scrumptious merinos your jam definitely use it i would never say don't use it but superwash merino singles are not something that i can use because i am way too hard wearing i would actually really love to knit this in uh maybe not a brushed alpaca but a more alpaca based yarn with a little bit of a fuzz in different colors for the contrast on this side and then some natural yarns fading in different colours on this side or something even more fun just like one solid and then the alpaca fade. All that to say I really don't think this yarn has held up well and I don't really like it. I might use this as a fabric for something for little Audrey or I don't know any anything any suggestions would be most welcome but yes the melted mirage is a beautiful pattern and i would recommend anyone to knit it for funsies but definitely spend a bit more time looking at yarn and making a more conscious thoughtful decision because this is something that i don't love and there you go uh right so with this yarn, 
I also knitted a Uphill by Caitlin French, which is, I believe, another free pattern. And I will put pictures on the screen for you. I was just double checking to see what I used and it looks like I must have not used, I must have used this yarn and then purchased another full skein after so that I could make the shawl. So I knitted a shawl for Alex's mum in this yarn too and it was beautiful. I was really chuffed with it and Again, this is another thing. In hindsight, I probably should have knitted it a bit bigger for for her. Um, if if Claire washes it, I think it will grow and it will be bigger. But I'm not sure that I ever explained how to. So maybe next time I see Claire, I'll try and get that and see how that's going. But from memory, it was a very nice pattern to work. It was very clear. It was another free pattern um, and a bit more fun. There was a bit more lace work and a little bit more texture to it. So I can't really talk very much on that, but yeah, that was actually knitted from November the 29th, 2018 to November the 12th, 2018. So really, I reckon I should have put another week's work into it and it would have been the perfect size. So that's quite important. I think for me, I realise now that already that a really small shawlette's quite useful if you're happy to pin it and you want something small but I might be inclined to tune it cows instead which is where I did end up going I've got a cow that I love um, or I want a really big sumptuous oversized that I can throw around me I'm gonna try and take measurements from my grain shawl and what I will do when I'm knitting my hand spun is if I can aim to get those measurements plus a couple of inches um, and the way I might check that is to go through my fabric stash and just check um, by measuring my grain shawl adding a few inches and trying to get a piece of fabric that I don't have to cut and then wrapping it and just seeing and I think that will be a really nice way of me not getting a full extent because I don't really have stretchy fabric in my stash or fabric pantry, um, I don't have very much fabric, um, or, but yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So the next one, this is much better, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to hit pause quickly, I didn't realise that I'd waffle this much. Um, so this one is more fun, this is the Texture Time by Stephen West, of West Knits, and this was a really fun project for me to knit. I I lengthened it out. I let the process take me quite some time. I used some yarns that are, aren't available. I used some, some yarns that are from my wool pantry and because they're club colorways. Um, and I really enjoyed the process of learning different techniques, using different techniques in a different way. Um, and here it is. This is, this was one that I finished um, one Christmas day. It was like a finished it as a Christmas gift to myself. I was doing the cast off. So if you are an experienced knitter and you want a challenge, texture times one of them. It's not, it's not too strenuous. It, it's just there's quite a lot of it and there's a few different techniques. So. You've got the central section, you've got some fun lacy eyelets, you've got Latvian braids which are one of my favourites but I've never used them on a shawl, I've used them on cuffs of mittens. You've got some fun sort of almost like shale and then you've got these big eyelets and you've got so many textures and different yarn choices. I would love to see this in a completely natural um, palette and I think that might be something that I do because whilst actually these colours are quite good for me maybe I don't know I am I mean look at this is an, this is more where my heart really lays so this item might be 
gifted eventually. I'm not quite sure. I feel like my uncle should have it because whilst I was knitting it her, that Christmas, he kept going on about it. He was like, wow, wow. I can't, I'm, oh, well, maybe you'd wear it. Um, Mom, Dad, if you're here, do you think Gerard would want it? <laughs> it, it? This has a lot of work that has gone into it and yes, whilst I love it, I do imagine myself wanting to re-knit it eventually, uh, not anytime soon, but in more woolly wool um, and yarn, yarn that really makes my heart sing because this is okay, some of this was my own hand dyed, some of it was um, dyed by a company uh, and it was their yarn club uh, and some of it was just commercial and I just think if you've been here for a while you know kind of more where I'm heading um, I'm sat here kind of looking around because on my table is my Boskiva knitted in yarn that is a project uh, pattern by lovely Marina knitted in the most local yarn I've ever held and then to my right I've got some beautiful yarn from Telespin which is uh, Norwegian lamb's wool and mohair um, and then some 100% British woolly wool and then behind me I've got some Peruvian Highland which is gorgeous yarn by Thick Skein. This is some hand spun, which is for a very special project. And some Evering Bell by Whistlebear. That's kind of more where I'm going. And actually, both of these, I would be inclined to use some Whistlebear mohair for, and the Cheviot Marsh would be great for this. Hmm. Oh, Alice. I'm not gonna do that yet. I don't need to knit that again yet. So yeah, the texture time's a lot of fun. If you are more of a, wanting more of a challenging knit, I do recommend. And if you want something big, this is huge. Um, and it has, it continues to grow. Um, but it definitely does the trick. I wore this with my Eastwind jacket by Emily Foden in winter this year. Mostly I wore my other two items, which I'll show you shortly. Um, but I did wear this a bit and it was plenty warm enough. I didn't actually have anything other than a thermal layer, Icelandic jumper, Eastwind jacket and this for basically the entire of winter. I didn't need, it was so mild that I didn't need a full, you know, a traditional coat as such. So yeah, a lot of fun. If you have an aversion to ends, look away, but Stephen has this technique where you twizzle things to stop you having to weave them in and I've got to say it worked. I ended up tying them in knots and I think if this was a more woolly russet yarn you wouldn't have needed to um, but they did kind of untwizzle so I did use that technique. A lot of fun, would love to knit again, don't need to spend money on yarn for knitting it again. Um, whew. the next one is one that I've really loved knitting and this is the Sujourner shawl by Zandi Peters. This is a much better size for not having to carry too much weight around and might be the more, more of the size that many are used to. You can wear these in so many different ways. It goes around many times if you need it to. Um, but this is beautiful. It was from a pom-pom magazine. Um, got it here, I think. I think it was winter 2018. The one with the beautiful Nora Garn pattern on the front. And I believe just it, the, yeah based on Victorian influences mostly. So it's really beautiful and very apt. So two colours of fingering weight yarn and I opted to add mohair. I think it is, yeah. Um, the purple you can see here is Undercover Otter in the Purple Skies colourway, I think. And the mohair was something that I custom dyed for myself. And then it is a grey 
based on, I think it was a high twist that I dyed, and then a commercial mohair of Drops Kid Silk. Really loved knitting this. Um, I do really like the colours still, but I'm not sure, again, these are the most me colours now. I've really kind of settled into, I'm more and more settling into a colour palette, okay, um, which is kind of becoming more and more clear as to what I'm really drawn to. And at the start of the year, I did myself mood boards on kind of spring, summer, autumn and winter and photographed actually items that I own and what I thought I wore most. And I think I can go in and update my spring and summer ones now and be a bit more accurate. Uh, and what I've already noticed is it's more darker colours, the things that I'm really drawn to. I like, I do like pastels, but kind of dirty pastels. That's my kind of favourite and natural colours. And again, usually the dirtier versions, if that makes sense. And what I mean is like more, yeah, just muted and a bit muggy. Um, kind of these, and um, I do like a pop of red and a pop of a, a brighter, more sort of piney green. Um, so this, beautiful as it is, maybe doesn't fit in. So this probably, since it is special, should be gifted to someone. Ah, um. oh, hey little Mai. Oh, you can't, you can't sit on there. I'm gonna say hi. Oh, you come say hi. Just briefly. Sweet girl. Ooh, I'm gonna have to swap memory cards. Okay, hopefully. It's just one of those days. The memory card ran out. Um, anyway. This one is particularly special to me. This is a shawl that I first knitted for myself um, for our wedding in September last year. I knitted it in a very different colour palette uh, the first time round and that was because they were the sort of colours that I imagined that I would wear when we got married and that version ended up being a gift to my mother because I love her very much and I wanted to give her something that I'd I'd kind of put notes of her and I don't know that she'd notice and it's a bit like but the the there was a telespin colour in there which hopefully you'll see and it's like a burgundy and it always reminded me of her hair growing up <laughs> like there was it's like darker it's a lot darker actually when you look at it closely when you're a bit further away it's just like a burgundy but it's a beautiful colour and I kept that kind of burgundy in the second version. Um, but I'm not sensitive to yarns particularly and that is quite a soft shawl and I felt like that would be perfect for my mum. But when I shared it, so many very kind people like yourself said that they would love the pattern um, and I ended up taking notes and that's something that I've got much better with now but in the past I didn't so this was very lucky that I had um, so I got to knit it a second time because I wanted to check it as I went and initially I wanted to use some sorry I have to apologize this sticks to the poof that I'm sat on the the footstool that I'm sat on that needs sanding because I used chalk paint on it on my mum's recommendation but it means that this is like Velcro. I wanted to use uh, mm, um, something like Tintika's yarn or something naturally dyed. However, it would have cost an, a small fortune to do. And really, I wanted something non-superwash and rustic because that is where we've kind of figured out with the exception of maybe mohair and some fancy base, like fancy non-superwash bases. This is where my heart lays. These colours are just about right. I 
could have gone maybe darker with the grey but I really wanted the there to be quite a high contrast in the colour work. Um, so I used Jameson and Smith and I could not be happier. I love this shawl so much. Um, now I use this uh, like an old shale pattern because Scotland, I use thistles because Scotland. But the idea with this one, it should actually, I'm hoping to release it fairly soon. I might, I might save it for our one year anniversary, so sort of the 5th of September. Um, but I've, I've included empty charts so that it can become your own adventure shawl. But we'll talk more about that when that time comes. But this for me is a really good size. It is big. It does squish down into something a lot smaller than what I'm showing you really, but it's like taking a jumper, only you can use it as a blanket. Um, you can wrap, me and Alex fit in this just about, like to, to when it's really cold in the winter we were sitting with uh, our hand knitted blanket on, on our legs with this round us and we were so snug. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with this. This is, on the bigger side of things, this is probably as big as I'd ever need or think is sort of practical any bigger and it really does probably become a bit cumbersome and a bit unnecessary for the UK. <laughs> but yeah, I actually enjoyed this when we went recently for a big walk unintentionally when we were in Scotland. Um, Alex was like, you should take this. And I was like, I don't know, I've, I've, I'll be fine. And this basically saved me um, because when we started the walk, it was actually really quite hot, but as it got higher, it wasn't actually cold, but the wind was a bit intense. So this kept me warm. And then it did get really cold and I put on all my layers and this saved me, it saved me, made me nice and toasty. But yes, I love this one. This is probably my favourite in that it means so much to me. You know, I, I gifted one to my mum and I think my mum's hair now actually goes with the shawl background colour in hindsight. She's got this lovely like honeyed ashy colour. It's really hard to describe and it picks out those that I don't have that. I've got this chocolate brown. <laughs> and grey. Um, so yeah, and I won't talk too much about this one either because this is another one of my own ones because I've, I never knitted a scarf. Um, and I wanted to knit a, a wrap slash scarf that was perfect for me and that gave me joy and I ended up coming up with the Spring Intentions and I'll put the original, some photos of the original and this was special in many, many ways. I, again, I won't gush too much about it, but the yarn that I used was yarn that I had dyed myself using plant matter from one of the favorite places that we go to called Windy Hollow. Um, so that meant a lot to me. And then I knitted this project more intentionally than I'd knitted really ever. I was very thoughtful about, I swatched, which doesn't happen, about, so I was thoughtful about how many stitches I cast on, I was thoughtful about how I wanted to knit it, and I wanted it to be very relaxing, very intuitive while holding a bit of attention, so I didn't want everything to be just rib or just stocking it, I wanted to interest, so I came up with textures, and then I started matching textures to different practices for myself, and then that became a project that I get ended up sharing and we did a knit along um, for seven weeks from spring this year and this was the this was my second sample in the yarn that we ended up releasing kits for which is wild um, and this is Whistle Bear's Cheviot Marsh which is a beautiful base it's I personally don't find it I find it very soft some people would f consider this rustic um, 
I love the stitch definition it gives. This palette is weird to me. I don't know really what. I think it was my um, mood board actually inspired these colours in hindsight. They, they were very much colours that showed on my spring mood board and I always put it on and I'm like, oh yeah, weirdly this colours look good on me I think. At least like, like re weird because they're not, I think they're all colours I use separately but I have never put together um, and it can be worn in lots of different ways you just have it big. I am chuffed with it really, I really like this item, this is probably my second favourite. These two are my favourite shawls that I own and wear the most. This one is a bit more, well it's less cumbersome, so it is a bit smaller, you can wear it in quite a few ways but it doesn't hang down the back or anything. Um, so yeah, I really like this one. I would knit something this size and shape again, definitely. Um, and yeah, Audrey is at the door, beckoning me. And I should go and let her in quickly. Because we could have more, one or two more interruptions, huh? You're a naughty little tinker. You're interrupting again. Um, so yeah, I, I will be knitting more shawls. I'm quite looking forward to knitting my hand spun one with these thoughts in my mind. Uh, I do think this <laughs> this um, communicating and chatting in this way really helps. If you have any thoughts, I would really be very glad to hear them. Like, what is there? A, there's many different shaped shawls and I haven't tried that many really. Rectangular, triangular, obscure, crescented. Um, what do you find best? I know that everyone has different preferences. Some people like really thin long ones so you can wrap it around a couple of times and then tie it. Some just like a square, some just don't see the use and want cowls. I do really like a cowl, I've got to say, for ease and for how small they are. If I want to wear, you know, coats that have got a higher neck, a shawl can be a bit of a problem. Yeah, do let me know. I am, you know, ever so grateful for you spending a bit of time with me. I hope that this does find you well, maybe inspired a little bit, maybe maybe completely baffled as to why anyone would knit a shawl. Let me know. Um, it's really nice to sit here. I almost don't want to leave because then I have got a whole world of things to do. Let's stay and hang out. Let's be calm and sit for a little bit longer. <laughs> I'm kidding. I really best get on and I hope that whatever you're up to, you are enjoying yourself. Maybe you're making, maybe you're not. If you're not, I hope that you get to do some making in the near future, whether that's knitting, sewing, spinning, painting your house, something something fun please 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 be kind to each other send hugs to those that need it i know there's a few out there at the moment that need a bit more bit more cuddles um i hope that you don't have any car woes <laughs> um oh dear uh, um yes look after each other be kind to yourself and love fiercely and I will see you again very soon hopefully.
Are you enjoying that? Audrey is watching the bees on my lavender. <laughs> 